Uh, good evening, uh, or good morning, should I say. I'm, today I'm interviewing David Woodall of uh, the new company ASM. And what city are you in, David? Uh, I'm in Perth, Jack. Perth. Okay. So it's uh, 8 uh, uh, p.m. where I am. What time is it where you are? 8 a.m. and a beautiful sunny winter's day. 21 degrees. Oh, Perfect. I forgot. I forgot it's winter down there. All right. Anyway, um, can you? I know that ASM has been spun off from the original Al Kane. And it interests me because in 2013, I gave a, uh, some lectures in Australia, and Ian Chalmers attended one. And I remember him telling me he'd been at Al Kane at that point for about 16 years. So ASM may be uh, a spinoff today, but it's certainly. The company it's coming from certainly has been around a long time. Uh, what was, I, I understand completely why you're doing this. Um, what is your plan? When are, you, when are you actually going to be listed separately on the, on the Australian exchange? Okay. So last week we had the EGM with Altain where shareholders voted 99.95% uh, approval to demerge <clears throat> yeah. and, the, and the rationale is, is is very simple the market likes to have pure plays so alkane which initially started uh from a oil and gas went into rare earth then into gold it's going to be a it's going to be a purely gold focused company and asm will be purely a, a strategic minerals company okay. and that should come we will be listed as of the end of next week and which strategic minerals will will you be producing? Uh, we're we're fortunate with uh, with Dubbo. It's a polymetallic, so you've got zirconia. It's got rare earths, both heavy and light. So your neodymiums, praseodymiums, dispersiums, and uh, terbiums, uh, niobium, and also hafnium. Now, uh, I've been I, I was reading uh, some of your material, and I noticed that. You're working with an, a new Korean company called Xeron, uh, which is, I believe, going to be able to produce uh, the, the individual metals and perhaps alloys of, of your strategic materials. And typically, zirconium, for example, uh, metals are high temperature, very high temperature metallurgy, and that's normally very expensive and, 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 and uh, to produce, and, and a... There aren't that many companies that can do it. So uh, Xeron is new, and you are your. Uh, do you have a joint venture with them? What What is your your connection with this high tech metallization company? So, Alkane and now ASM has has developed a over a decade a relationship within China, uh, within Korea. So our focus has been how do we get that relation stronger? We came across a group that was looking for investment on a, on a new metallization process, which entails uh, a reduction furnace and electro refining. So in all of our products, we have done on a laboratory scale, we've produced titanium, we've produced uh, zirconium metal, we've also produced uh, neodymium metals, and we are progressing through a pilot plant process, which will ultimately, our goal is to produce metals for all of our products. Okay. So you plan to vertically integrate into metals production from your... Uh... Yeah, that's, that seems the logical way to go in this business. Um, many, many companies produce either a, a carbonate or, or, or a metal oxide. That has to go further treatment, and generally that has to go to China. 85%, as you know, of metal production in the rare earth zirconia space goes through China. Right. So we see an opportunity um, to provide it, be an alternate uh, supplier of, of these critical minerals. So that's, that's part of our strategy. I think that's a really good idea uh, because it's one of the missing parts of the non-Chinese uh, supply chain, which is making the metals. The interesting thing there is that 
the one of the reasons that metal production has not commenced in the West, outside, besides the, uh, let's say, false pricing coming out of China on metals, uh, the Chinese typically will tell you that the price of a, a rare earth metal is only 10% above the price of the oxide. Uh, this yeah. really covers the energy cost in a, re, in a real business. But in, in any case, the real problem is that the Chinese electrolyze molten eutectics of fluorides of the rare earths. And this is a horribly dirty process, which is basically uh, prohibitive from a cost uh, of health and safety in the West. And I know in the United States, no one wants to do this because they don't want to go through getting um, uh, approved to produce hydrogen fluoride and fluorine gas uh, as a waste. So I, I've heard of Xeron before and I've paid a little attention. It looks to me like uh, it's a much safer process, which is very important. And that is, that's the difference. The, 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 the excellent work with our South Korean partners is, is, is really, it's a game changer. Yes. So recently we, we released that we produced titanium metal mm. and we produced a titanium metal oxide. We did that with 45% less energy. Okay. The process that has been developed and we've now got global licensing to to manage with our joint venture partners in, in Zerontech um, is a clean metal production. So as we progress that further, we will we'll start talking a little bit more about it. But as you can understand, this is this is game changing stuff, not only in terms of producing metal, but in terms of the environmental impacts of that production of metal. In, in, in the United States and North America, we have uh, not too many, but some very highly specialized companies making zirconium metal, hopium metal, and products. Uh, we have some making titanium, uh, but and we have none making rare earth metals. We certainly don't have a single company in all of these strategic materials. So I, I think that you're going to um, shake up the, the U.S. market. Because I believe that you're going to be able to do this. And quite frankly, um, I believe that you may be the first into this market with rare earth metals not made in, in Asia. Yeah, look, I, I think that's part of the strategy. The, when you look at how a business operates, generally you want multiple suppliers to feed right. your supply right. chain. And... To, to China's credit, they've vertically integrated. So when they sell their kilo of near Dimian, instead of for $40 a kilo, they're yeah. selling it somewhere from $400 to $4,000 a kilo, but as part of an electric vehicle right. or some sort of renewable energy. So to me, um, the trade tensions, the COVID impact on supply chains has said, let's look at a modification of the global supply chain. And I think ASM is really well um, located to be able to go into that supply chain and work work a, a cooperative really with with various companies. Well, uh, I I really don't have any more questions at this point, and I think you're going to be successful, and I, I wish you the best of luck. And please keep in touch, and particularly let me know when you're able to produce those metals. In any quantity. Well, thank you, Jack. Uh, watch this space because there, there's going to be information coming sooner than you think. Thank you. I, I, thank I'm you. looking forward to it. And thank you for the, for your time. Thank you very much.